Hello and welcome back to a very short little tutorial. Um, I just want to show you something today about the automation modes in Clip Automation and Bitwig. Uh, I discovered this the other day and I think it's absolutely fantastic and I haven't really seen anything about this uh, on the old nets. So I've made here a very simple little one beat clip. This isn't even a bar, this kick is one kick and this is obviously four hats in one thing. We've got four notes here. So this is what we have. Really very short, very, uh, it, we haven't got much leeway here for interest. Um, but I wanted to show you how, in, if, if in this clip of this ARP, I now press A and I go to the automation mode, we have here the length of that uh, section, then we have one beat. And if I were to, say, play with the, the frequency of that filter, if I draw in a note here, I could, could open and close it over, uh, you know, one beat. And I'm sure a lot of you know about the free run automation section, but what that basically means, if I click this, this will basically allow me to have automation that is um, unlinked. It's pretty much the same as in Ableton. They have the unlinked modulation feature, but this may, allows you to have automation that is longer or shorter than an actual clip. So even though we've only got the four notes here, you'll now see that I can do automation that's longer than that clip. And you can see that the clip is still just one beat long, but we now have a whole bars worth of automation. That's all well and good. It's not that interesting, really. I mean, you can find a lot of uses for that. For example, maybe I wanted to have automation that's just um, even shorter. You know, if I did something like this, um, now I have... Uh, sorry, now we need to go on... I need to change my loop. And then if I go back to free run here, then I can now have the automation that's really short. But where this starts to get really cool is when you start to use the different automation types. Um, so first of all, we have absolute, then we have additive, and the last one is, very difficult word to say, multiplicative, mul multiplicative, yeah, you know what I mean. Um, and these basically run um, in, in terms of hierarchy right. So we start with uh, the absolute, which is basically whatever automation you do, and then you can add and subtract from that automation with the additive. And then the final one, multiplication, multiplication always is the last process in a mathematical formula. So currently that would be set to 100, but if I started bringing that down, anything I do will be ultimately multiplied by whatever that ratio is. So where this starts to get interesting is if I now delete those automation points, we just got our plain little pattern here, and bring the filter down is if I now go into the second section the additive and before I do anything in the absolute I now just draw in some some things let's see what this sounds like oh, that would do for the demonstration okay so we've got this short little weird automation pattern if I now go back into the absolute section you can see that that is sort of grayed out in red behind it, which means that anything I do in here now will respond to that, but still have the absolute function. So now I'm going to use on this one beat clip free run automation, and I'm going to stretch this out to be eight bars. And notice what happens as I start to drag this up is now we have all of that um, additive multiplication being scaled appropriately. So if I go back in and I change this again and I go, that it, it works appropriately and then anything that you do here very cool and where this starts to get even cooler as well is say you say you are the kind of person who likes to work in clip view or you like to work in this view uh, sometimes to come up with ideas and then I record them into arrangement as soon as possible um, but using this view is quite cool because you can then see everything that you're doing and what's very cool is any automation that you do here bearing in mind again this is a one beat clip I then have this uh, bizarre little automation line I'm doing there. Um, let's change that a little bit. And then I have this line building up over nine bars. Even though I'm recording in a one beat clip, look what happens in the timeline now. So not only do we have this line being recorded in as just the regular automation line we would have if we were just editing it in the arranger view, but We now have also that additive automation happening underneath. And that's really cool for when you're coming up with simple little patterns in the, um, I suppose you call this the, the mixer view. 
um, you, you can really get quite far into your arrangement just by using the free run automation. And that saves you a lot of time. If you know, for example, that this little clip here is gonna run for 16 bars, you can just set the free run automation to be 16 bars and say that you know that your track is going to be building up to 17. And then you know that on the sec like the, the next section, you're gonna have it sort of like just quite fixed. And then you do a little bit of the automation again there. You could then record in your track. Let me just get rid of those stop buttons for a sec. Let's, um, let's re-record. And you'll see that the automation is already done, which I think is just brilliant. Oh, sorry. I've actually got to delete everything I did there. Let's get rid of that as well. Okay, yeah, so let's record in. Again, we've got all of those little pieces attached to that overall line. And they can then be edited even in the arranger view by then clicking on it and doing the same thing of going to this additive section. But as this starts to build up, brilliant, very cool. In fact, I'm just going to trigger it early. Now when I then add in the next section with the other automation, very cool. And you can imagine the huge amount of uses for this. You know, say you have a very short hat pattern. You can create variations in, say, let's, let's do something with the hat decay. So uh, let's go in here. I could then do some of these hats to be a bit longer in this view. Or say, in fact, I could make that even shorter. So I, I know that I'm only just going to want to have two bits of automation there. I could then go into the absolute section and I could now in free run bring this up over time. And when you start to, you know, use this in tandem with the modulate like the modulation system, it really starts to be um quite a quite an interesting little powerhouse of tools. And just to quickly show you what the multiplication thing does is um obviously times by 100% means that nothing's really changing. But if I now do free run automation on this as well, I could then I can bring everything down in relation to that multiplication. So I don't massively use the multiplication part just because um, I'm quite happy with the additive and the absolute. But anyway, I hope that's a cool little trick and uh, see you next time.